Hi guys, welcome back to I Market Podcast. Today, our guest is a gentleman called Ronald Kaleo. Welcome, Ronald. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> Yay! Ronald is a founder of Digimavs Limited, an e-commerce platform that was founded and located in Nairobi. He provides technological and physical resources necessary to operate an e-commerce platform or business to his clients. So if you're looking for an e-commerce platform, he's your guy. And before we start, so first, I really think we have a lot to unpack because that e-commerce, I don't know, that I world know. is usually such a blur. Yeah. So I'm really excited to have you. Thank you very and much. And I guess maybe what we should start is with what I like to call a check-in. Yes. A mm. uh, scale of one to ten. Mm -hmm. How are you? How, how are you feeling today? Mm. And what's one thing you're grateful for? Okay. A uh, scale of one to ten, today I'm feeling like an eight. I think I I stretched myself too much yesterday. Okay. So I'm kind of paying for it today. So usually I operate on a 9 or 10. In December, <laughs> I'm a, December has started oh, which, early. Which like, I know, I'm like, was it in the gym? <laughs> was it in the club? But when you say stretch, what do you no, mean? When I say stretch, I've been out in the field with my riders. Well. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> index one. Yeah. What did you have with that index one? Okay, uh, fantastic. And you, yeah. Paula? What are you grateful oh, for? What are you grateful for? Uh, um, today I'm grateful for people and relationships because even I would not be here today without those. Mm. So yeah, so Absolutely. For. Fantastic. Yes. You? On a scale of 1 to 10, I think I'm at a 10. I'm feeling good. What I'm grateful for, I think the same as Ronald. Mm. I'm just grateful for connections, getting to know people, learning mm. what they do. Mm. I'm just grateful for that today. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. You? I am at a 10 mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> wow. uh, that's the energy we're bringing <laughs> here. 10 out of Thank 10. Yes. And I'm actually grateful for good health. Mm. Yeah, I think the, you know one thing yes. COVID brought, and then also right now there's another wave around, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. It's just when one day when you wake up and you're feeling good, you're not ill, yes. you can actually meet mm. people. You're not, you're not in our houses. We can actually have conversations like this. I mean, mm. that's just mm. a reason to be grateful. So, mm. yep. yeah. Cool. Ronald, yeah. tell us what is this e-commerce thing, this e-commerce world, because people still struggle, you know, with mm. understanding what exactly e-commerce is. Mm. So just give us a brief background on what e-commerce is in layman's terms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so e-commerce is basically exchange of goods and services, but now being facilitated by the internet and hence the e-part. Okay. So um, e-commerce can take different uh, formats. So you can have trading of goods, so mm -hmm. online shops. So I have some shoes that I want to sell. I have traditionally sold at my shop in town and I want to expand my market. So what do I do is that I get on an, I get a website. On that website, I place my products and then I tell my consumers that they can be able to uh, obtain my products from that website. Consumers go there, purchase the products on the website. Uh, then from there, the that business works with a delivery service mm -hmm. like us mm -hmm. who will then now transport that product from their premises to the customer. And let me ask you before um, we move to the next um, question, uh, while you're at it, mm. what's the difference between um, Instagram being a marketplace and having a uh, website? Okay, okay. So now uh, e-commerce has evolved. So e-commerce began as what we were talking about, that traditional website where mm -hmm. I can then place my mm -hmm. products and people can be able to access them mm -hmm. to social commerce. So look at um, now trading that website with a social platform okay mm. yes because people are already on those social pl platforms True. Yeah. so then um the platforms have created uh portals where you can be able to actually put in your products and then now consumers then the functionality of consumers being able to select different products check out those products pay for them and uh, then that order being pushed to a logistical system has also now been in embedded into those social platforms okay yes. so, so it's right. just easier yes because before and uh, you, if you have a website you have to go and create your own website yeah. yes so yeah. right now when you you're on Instagram, the they've platforms. already created that for you. Yes. Yeah. So your job is just to put what products you need there, yes. what you're selling, and then it, they actually facilitate the process. Hundred yeah. percent. Interesting for me, you know, me and you have a lot of history. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, <laughs> we we met uh, working somewhere on Raraka. Yes. That, and we were back working in back in the day, yeah, about 10, 10, 11 years ago. Imagine that. A little bit more. More. Oh my <laughs> God, no, I'm not ready. No. <laughs> um, it's just the other day. Yes. Um, 
and I really want to hear your story because I think you have a powerful story of mm. how did you decide to make the, speech, the switch yeah, mm. from employment mm. into this world of e-commerce? Mm. I mean, you could have done so many other things. Yeah? Mm. So there's the story of first just how do you move into entrepreneurship, but then more importantly now, how you ended up in this world of, entrep- of uh, e-commerce. Okay, um, so I began in the alcohol uh, industry, mm-hmm. um, worked there for about 10 years, and uh, then eventually decided to move into more of the food world. And um, I was fortunate enough to move into the food world on the online platforms. Mm. So I moved to work for one of the early, I think it was actually the first uh, online platform in this country, Mm -hmm. uh, which was an organization that was fortunate enough to see um, to take advantage of that first first mover advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the company was doing well in terms of the number of uh, clients and the size of clients that it was getting, but uh, required a lot of work in terms of uh, the management. So got in, turned around that business um, and got in as an employee. Uh, along the transition of, uh, along the process of turning around that business, we did uh, also transition from 100% employees to being able to have some sort of ownership in the business. Nice. So that helped me basically, like, it was like a cheat, if <laughs> you may say, because I was kind of employed and kind of mm. an owner, and helps, hence it, it, it gave me a good introduction into the world of entrepreneurship. Uh, and that's but that just sorry before you go I think that's just a point I want I think it's, a, it's an important point to make is you don't also have to because sometimes people think when you're going to entrepreneurship there's only one way you quit your job mm. and you go jump into uh, this yeah. new thing uh, yes, so yes, I just yes. like that it's a different mm. way of saying actually you can actually get you know equity and get stake in what yes. you're doing and that's yeah. also part of being an yes, entrepreneur and yes, owning the business true, true. yeah so that's really yes. cool because that gives you a totally different perspective mm. when you when you actually have skin in the game mm. uh and be it just shareholding okay it needs to be a bit sizable but as long as you have shareholding within that business mm. then you have skin in the game and you'll find that even the way you think changes mm-hmm. you totally change from that as attitude of is it five o'clock yet i need to leave yeah to the attitude of um it's already five o'clock i have so much more to do <laughs> <laughs> where did the where did yeah. the day go did the hours go to yeah. yes nice. yes, yeah. yes yes that okay. that mental shift actually happens ah, fantastic that, but, okay sorry sorry for interrupting <laughs> 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 i just thought that was such a powerful point yeah uh, um, nice. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that helped me to actually do the, the change in mind. Mm. Um, then the business, uh, we grew the business, I, m- I may say, a bit too well, uh, <laughs> to the level that um, the shareholders within the business thought that that company, because we had built it to serve uh, both internal clients and external clients. Mm but uh, the internal shareholders felt that they can get more value from that organization by that organization only serving their internal brands. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, that uh, really didn't uh, work because of the fact that um, I was looking to expand and be able to offer these services to as many clients as possible because there is also the risk of depending depending on one client Mm -hmm. and then if anything happens to that client, whatever shocks that hit that business also hit your business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm. yes. So then I felt that I would like a business that is more inter- uh, diversified in terms of the client base. Mm-hmm. And hence, um, I opted to move out from an executional role within that business and then now get into Digimouse and be able to now serve the market out there as a last mile logistics service provider. Nice. Mm. And and one Mm. of the interesting things, just when you're talking about uh, e-commerce, is, you know, when when you say e-commerce, that last mile is critical, right? Because, you know, when you talk about Amazon, um, you know, even Safaricom, we Mm -hmm. tried. Mm. Did we try? Mm. We are. We are trying. (laughs) We are trying. It's past Mm. or present continuous (laughs) with Masoko. Mm. And the learning actually was, it's not, so the tech is important, right? So you need the tech that brings Mm. people into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But the the moment of truth for your mm. customer mm. is when you actually deliver the product, mm. yeah, right mm. to the person. That's when I believe mm. that I put my thing on Instagram. When I get the uh, the wig, because I'm that chick of wigs. Yeah. Mm. When you get the wig and deliver it to you, that's when you believe that actually this platform works. It works. Yes. Yeah. And that world is murky. Mm. 
because mm. it's borders it's yes. i don't know what yes. it's true yes so i i believe there might be a couple of challenges yeah. in that mm. whole space so mm. it would be good to, in, to to understand what is what are the biggest challenges and what are the what are the things that you've done and seen differently that mm. are actually making it work for you and actually make it something that you want to do mm. so um one thing we ca- i came to realize is that e-commerce is the business of time so convenience mm, to the that's consumer. deep that's like hashtag, <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> yes we are in the business of time uh-huh. because um the consumer experience in e-commerce is measured by are you able to satisfy this convenience aspect mm. yes so the consumer gets into a contract with whatever e-commerce platform they're working with at that particular moment in mm-hmm. time and uh they pay their money to be able to get a certain commodity but they want that commodity to come within a certain time frame mm-hmm. because if it comes 10 minutes late i need to have left the house to go for a meeting mm-hmm. so i want that uh product to come in in this 30 minute window mm-hmm. so being able to then uh deliver on time becomes very crucial for mm-hmm. your consumer mm-hmm. um as you've said the the world is murky because now to be able to deliver you are working with different stakeholders mm. there is a rider who has come from the informal sector mm-hmm. to whom the aspect of time is 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 not as important he it's might fluid. not yeah it might it's, it's, fluid. it's fluid whether he is 10 minutes or 15 minutes late to him it doesn't really matter mm. but yeah. in the e-commerce world it does All and right. that's what makes the difference between a good platform and a platform that consumers are not very happy to order from the next time ag- True. Uh, mm-hmm. again yeah so it involves a lot of training on mm-hmm. on the part of the riders mm-hmm. in terms of them understanding that um this business is a business of time and us being able to deliver within the time period that we promised is crucial mm. So the riders need to be able to grasp that concept and uh if there is uh inability to meet that expectation then now the next thing that we are teaching the riders is communication that you need to be able to reach out to the consumer and let them know that yes we promised abcd but due to certain circumstances we request that you give us an additional xyz mm. yes all right great and you've um spoken about riders so let me take you back a bit mm. would you mind explaining to us what digimov is is it about is it a commerce platform for riders uh, alone mm. are you expanding and how mm. exactly is technology enabling your business your riders and your customers okay so digimovs is an e-commerce operations service provider okay oh, what is that <laughs> mm-hmm. again in layman's language <laughs> let's try it like take two <laughs> <laughs> so um we basically um enable the operations of an e-commerce business yes mm-hmm. so as we said an e-commerce business has uh, different aspects there's the technological aspect so the technological aspect is what will allow you to collect orders mm-hmm. so through an app mm-hmm. or a website or for instagram. example in this case instagram, instagram a social platform okay mm-hmm. yes now once you've collected those orders you also need to be able to to uh, deliver those orders to the different riders distribute those orders to the different riders to be able to now deliver them to the customers mm-hmm. that is another technological platform called mm-hmm. a logistics platform mm-hmm. yes okay. mm-hmm. so there is the order management platform collects the orders that can be your app your mm-hmm. social platform or mm-hmm. your website mm-hmm. then there is a logistics platform that does the distribution of those orders to the riders so the riders can now collect the orders and deliver them to the customers okay. so the riders and the fleet are the last piece that's the physical piece yes so as an e-commerce operations service provider we provide all these three pieces mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. we have been concentrating on the last piece which is the last mile logistics that's mm-hmm. the physical part but we also do develop logistics platforms and order management platforms to allow the consumers to collect orders for the order management platforms and to distribute those orders to riders for the logistics platforms okay wow yeah. so the idea yeah. of being connected to the internet because also what we're talking about mm. um mm. yeah so i think first e-commerce would not exist without without the, the internet, internet, internet right yes, yes. so the whole um glue i think across is, is from when you take your orders to managing your logistics to actually uh, delivering to, uh, to the end yes the flow is the internet and everything runs on the internet would be Bottom interesting line, for me yeah. to hear mm. what 
um, for especially w- what are the things that if if you didn't have a good connection and you mm. didn't if your radars for example are not connected you wouldn't be able to do what are the like the key things that actually this business would not work if you are not if you didn't have an internet connection that works wow okay um, as we've said uh, e-commerce is basically based on the internet so e-commerce would not work without mm-hmm. the internet <laughs> 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 that's where we need to start yeah, yeah. yeah? so consumers would not be able to place an order on a social platform because if I if I don't have bundles on my phone I can't access uh, Instagram mm-hmm. in the first place mm-hmm. yeah so there's no way I can even be able to shop true yes and then number two um, maybe uh, the consumer has access to the internet mm-hmm. yes but us as a business we've collected this order from the consumer then we have no way to connect to the logistics platform mm-hmm. then how do we distribute this order? How do we get a rider to come collect this order and take it to the consumer? Mm-hmm. It becomes impossible without the internet. Mm. Then we go to the last piece now, the physical piece of the rider. So as a rider, I'm out in the field. Yes, I might be... Okay, traditionally, I was a boda boda guy. I used to wait around the corner. Somebody would come. I, I, I They take a ride on my bike. I take them home. They pay me some money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But now... Um, I got a smartphone mm-hmm. and then through this smartphone I'm able to collect orders. Mm-hmm. Now what does this do? It it expands my my revenue streams mm-hmm. because apart from the person who will come and walk around the corner and then I will give them a ride and they pay me some money, mm-hmm. I now have the opportunity to one be able to do deliveries for food delivery, to be able to do deliveries for e-commerce companies, be able to do uh boda boda but now digital Buddha Buddha where the person doesn't have to come around the corner. I can go to them because they will request, I will see where they are, and then I will go to them, pick them up and take them wherever they need to go. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And so all of this cannot happen without, without the, the internet. internet. Yeah. Yes. You know, I just feel this is important at this point to highlight how it used to happen before the internet. Come <laughs> 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 on. <laughs> <laughs> it was impossible uh, <laughs> yeah. to get food delivered to you. Yes. How? Yeah. The things that we take for granted today. Mm. Like you sit mm. in your house and you're like, mm, I feel like... Today I want to eat I from... Feel, I, yeah, today yeah. I feel like ugali na, you know, na kanyama. I want a mm. nice, you know, kafrai. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You literally just go on Glovo on whatever platform mm. and it mm. comes to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once upon a time, the only option you had was to get into your car or get into a mat yes, and, and go, go to Jogonas and sit there Collect, and physically yeah. sit. Yes, mm. yes. So I think that's just, and I like what you're saying, it's just the, the landscape is shifting so fast. Mm. Right, mm. because things that... You know, ideally these days, once you have that seamlessness, mm-hmm. and I think the biggest issue that we've had, especially in 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 Africa, let me say Africa, but Kenya, was that connection to the last mile. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Because yes. It, the complexity, we don't have addresses. You know, there's no mm. at mm. you know mm-hmm. because you know in <laughs> developed markets that has been there happening, blocks, right? Yeah. Yes. There yes. were blocks. There was yes. whatever. So for us mm. guys, for the longest time, it's like someone says Kangware, mm. you're like, where do you start in Kangware? Mm. Yeah. You have the 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 addresses used to be. Uh, pass two transformers, then you see a <laughs> yellow kiosk. <laughs> those, are the, those are the directions. It's true. Yeah. 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 And and now, so now, what are the things that you've seen with the riders? Mm. Um, what are the kind of things that they're using, the technology that yes. actually makes it so much easier to do that? Mm. Now, you see through the internet, we have uh, products like Google Maps. Mm-hmm. Now, Google Maps will will enable us to be able to uh, map out ad- customer addresses mm-hmm. in, in a manner that now the rider can be able to know exactly where this order is going. Yeah. Yes. Now, um, what has happened is now that technology is already embedded within the logistical apps. So yes. when an order is coming in, an order comes in with latitudes and longitudes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, Those the, ones the of addresses, the addresses, <laughs> the pins, yes, the pins. Yes. It's a pin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting the know. Know. That's like Atlas. <laughs> exactly. The ones on the Atlas. It's an Atlas. It's so an a atlas. pin. A pin, a pin in the background is, is lat long. At atlas. It's yeah. a lat long. Yes, mm. it's a lat long positioning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you see, with that lat long positioning, I can actually see the physical place that I'm going to on my map. Mm-hmm. So on the map, I can see I am at the bottom of the map here, and I need to go up until the point where there is the first junction to the left. Then I'll take that first junction to the left. And I'm able to follow the map all the way to the customer's place. Even if I am not able to read words, I can see directions. Yeah. Mm. It becomes so easy. True. Yes. It becomes so easy to be able to 
on board a rider mm-hmm. uh train him on how exactly to use this app mm-hmm. and he is then capable in a in a matter of a day he is capable to actually do deliveries because no, no. of this technology let mm. me ask you now that i think about it because mm. when i do orders online mm. i have to talk to the page that is selling this particular thing mm-hmm. and then that page has like their own riders so mm. most of the time um when i'm talking to this um shops mm. they're like let me find a rider mm. they're unable to find riders sometimes because they are occupied or their mm. riders are not available so are this your target audiences like these people yes, who sell them? exactly so you just tell them listen i'm going to create for you a digital platform an e-commerce platform that will make mm. it easier to sell your stuff mm. and also thereafter will take the the headache if i can call it that Away from you. of exactly 100% okay. so what what happens is you have different types of merchants you have a merchant who maybe had already created their own website yeah so we can work with that merchant with their website so we will uh we'll connect our logistical system the only thing you'll need to plug in is we will just need to plug into the logistical their, into thing. their website okay. yeah. so th- mm. the back ends of the two sites is something called an api mm-hmm. which which uh, yes. allows for that communication yeah. to happen mm-hmm. so we just need an api key to their website mm-hmm. that way we can be able to uh, to plug in mm-hmm. we'll give them a template of how exactly they need to send us the information mm-hmm. looking which is a conversation between our technical guys and their technical guys yeah. and then from there the calls end there's no calls that she need, uh, that the, the pass the vendor needs to make the customers will place the orders the orders will come to uh, the vendor the vendor will review the order confirm that they can del- that they can process this order once they confirm the order is then sent to us then we see which vendor has requested for a rider and we send the rider to that particular vendor rider collects the item and delivers it to the oh, end consumer mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's, <laughs> but it's very interesting because mm. if most people don't know yes, yeah, right? yes. so yes. they're yes. in there with an unreliable border guy yes. Yes. he's you know, hectic this guy's mm. disappear the other so day i was doing a delivery the guy even angushed <laughs> there and then they get angry at you <laughs> then they're like una nisumbua sana wewe madam yeah so even managing that i yes, think that's such yes. a powerful uh, service Yeah. right because mm-hmm. what somebody wants i just want to, to sell my product i want my product and i want my customer to get it within a certain time, time. yes right and i don't want to manage that mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. The so inv- there's yeah. also the other merchant who doesn't have a website mm-hmm. so for that type of merchant we will build for them the, the website mm-hmm. then we will connect that website to our logistical system and when an order comes into that website uh the all the merchant here all they are doing is verifying this item do i have it in stock yes accept once they accept the order is sent to the logistical system mm-hmm. logistical system finds the most optimal rider now there's something there i i simplified i over simplified in the last explanation so the logistical What? system <laughs> <laughs> the logistical system will find the most optimal rider who is the rider closest to that vendor mm-hmm. to be able to get to the store as fast as possible collect the item and deliver it Mm-hmm. Yes. because the currency is time. Yes. That's the most part. That's my I want to yeah. the parting shot. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> currency is time. Okay. And and now because I was, I, one of the, we were talking about it earlier and I was saying when we used to do maybe I, I think it's changing especially covid has really accelerated but there's a point yes. when uh, border riders used to say um they have a kabambe mm. because of the gangsterness oh, of riding a yes. border and just the, the physicality of what they do mm. smartphones are such a high risk right mm. because if it breaks i'm done mm. so they they were saying you know i, I need a, bo- a, a kabambe and you see of course if you're talking about a kabambe you can't they can't access yes, this yes, opportunity yes, 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 is that still the case is it changing what what are you seeing especially with the riders that you work with uh now in the market that has totally changed mm-hmm. um riders have their understanding that without the tool there is no way they are, they are, they are being able to work Um yes I can stay to the traditional way of I want to remain with my kabambe because I think the kabambe will not break and uh-huh. it's cheaper mm-hmm. and uh I will stand at the corner and you'll find that at the end of the day you will be making x but me who has a smartphone I may be making 20x mm. true yeah? yeah and then now that mm. has caused a change in mind mm-hmm. of all most of the riders who are even coming to look for jobs at uh digimaps mm-hmm. already come with a smartphone mm-hmm. and you'll find that they have found ways to protect their smartphones they all have cases they all have screen protectors mm-hmm. uh the smartphone has become what we call the jembe Mm. It is actually true. a gem. True. Yes. yes. Cuz like a, an organization like Digimavs will provide the vehicle. All we ask the rider to do kuja na jembe yako which mm. is your phone. Yeah. Yes. 
that is how that is the mind change now that has happened yes and i'd really like that conversation because i'm like so how much yeah how much are they making yeah ah, okay. like what what mm. what is the difference between a guy who's there being independent independent mm. ngangana in on calls yeah. mm. versus somebody who has gotten a smartphone and seen this opportunity mm-hmm. what's the difference is it really 20x and 20x mm-hmm. of what mm. Mm. okay so and i'll give you an example of a young gentleman who joined our organization i say maybe about two months ago mm-hmm. um he came into the organization okay um he was not from such a fortunate background so mm-hmm. he was not able to come in with a smartphone but as dg Mavs, we do have a program that allows us to uh, equip them, equip them with a smartphone mm-hmm. so uh this young man came he couldn't even be able to number one ride our electric bicycle mm-hmm. so he had to go for ex- everyone does training we're on the electric back, bicycle we're coming back to the electric <laughs> we put a pin on electric bicycle mm-hmm. go ahead so everyone has to learn how has to be trained on the electric bicycle mm-hmm. most people take about uh an afternoon or a day at most okay. this guy's to this guy took two weeks mm-hmm. That was number one. Then number two, he didn't have a smartphone, so we get, got him a smartphone. Okay. Number three, understanding on how to use the app. Mm-hmm. That was a bit of a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we taught him that, and then he got into the field. Uh, there was obviously the ramp up uh, period when he was trying to, he was getting used to the equipment, to the electric bike. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can today report that that guy is making on average about 2,500 to 3,000 shillings a week. Wow. Yes. Wow. That is 10,000 to 12,000 shillings a month. From nothing. From, From nothing. nothing. From nothing. Totally wow. zero. That's amazing. Yeah. And this is a story of a rider. He actually resides in Kibera. And as I said, he came from the humble of humblest of backgrounds. Wow. And yes. now he can use a smartphone. Yes. Now, today he owns a smartphone. He has a job that pays him well. Yeah. yeah. His life has changed. Wonderful. 100%. Mm. That's mm. the actually the real <laughs> Tuinuani. Yeah, exactly. Yes, 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 Tuinuani. Yes, and actually, yes. literally transforming his life because of being connected to the internet. Yeah. I can say that uh, through the internet, we are able to change the lives of the youth in Kenya, especially mm. the youth who are who are coming from the most vulnerable backgrounds so not being able to have even the little capital to start a very small business yeah mm. so you see at dg Mavs, all you need to do is come with the you have the heart to work mm-hmm. full stop that's mm-hmm. all we want mm-hmm. we want somebody who's willing to work and yeah. willing to learn mm. as long as you that is the only thing that you need to have from there onwards we will be able to to, to work with you and th- via the in- through the internet we are then able to get work to give to these guys to change their lives absolutely yes. Yes. and yeah. okay so i have so many questions but let me <laughs> go back to because I, I want to bike. ask uh, yeah exactly i want to ask about uh, if I, the if i want to be a rider and if i want what do i do but mm. then yeah why you talked about electric bikes mm-hmm. why electric bikes mm. and Yeah, in this world of we know how borders are all over the place. Mm. Mm-hmm. Why would you choose electric bikes and is it something that even the riders are interested in? Mm. Okay. Um so I think I'd say if I count the reasons in my head before I start naming them, mm-hmm. it's about three reasons. So number one is uh and I'll start from the capitalistic side, commercial pers- uh, conversation. Uh an electric bike is a lot easier to maintain than a motorcycle it has fewer number of parts uh an electric bike does not have a motorized engine uh so a motorized engine that's using uh fuel, fuel. for example yeah. has quite a number of parts within it when i'm using a motor a motor is the same thing that you have in a pump mm-hmm. uh a motor's maintenance is zero mm-hmm. yeah Uh, a motor's power is electric so that means i'm either plugging it to a wall or a battery mm-hmm. yeah um so the commercial perspective comes from particularly how do i power mm-hmm. that that vehicle as we all know fuel has been going up mm-hmm. and fuel now is becoming it's getting to some levels that are uh, crazy. a bit crazy mm-hmm. yeah so when i eliminate the whole aspect of fuel in terms of powering this vehicle then even to my client mm-hmm. that is that vendor who's looking to deliver her, her mm-hmm. product or his product i can then be able to give them a commercially viable uh, rate mm-hmm. 
that when they pass that to their customer, the customer is not looking and I'm buying something for 500 shillings but I'm paying 250 shillings uh, for delivery. Mm. See, that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. I can't pay 50% of the value of mm-hmm. the item I'm buying for a delivery fee. Mm-hmm. But if I'm telling them you're buying an item for 500 shillings and the delivery fee is going to be 10%, 50 shillings, they're okay with that. Yeah. Yes. Great. So electric bikes allow us to do that. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Number two is... Um, Electric bikes are good for the environment. Mm. So internal combustion mm. engines uh, will emit carbon. True. That carbon is what's causing uh, global warming at the end of the uh-huh. day. The internal, uh, the electric bike has none of that. Then on top of uh, that, the second green uh, aspect of that is even for our rider. That physical activity is good for that rider. True. Yeah. 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 yeah so I think, yeah, those are the, the key reasons, I would say. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, <laughs> so tell us as we conclude, mm. if I want to be a rider on Digimap, what do I need to do? Uh, you just need to reach out to us. How um, do I reach out to you? The easiest and especially for the riders is they can reach out to us on phone and we tried we tried and uh, we tried to get a simple telephone number. So our telephone number is 0746 88447. Triple eight double four seven. Yes, Great. seven four six. If I want to uh. use my business to have um, an e-commerce platform, what do I need to do? Yeah, you can reach out to us on that same, same number, number. 0746 triple eight double four seven, or you can reach out to us on email, which is info at dg at dg dash mavs dot com. Wonderful. Yes. Great. I think you need to get an Instagram page. You need to get a Facebook page. <laughs> All of that. Go where customers yes. are. Because I know. that's going to be easier. Mm, mm. Oh, fantastic. Mm. So what is your parting shot? Oh. For us? I mean, I feel so schooled, but I guess <laughs> I have one final thought that for anyone who's listening, either a rider mm. or as I'm a business, yeah. what she mentioned, I'm a person on Instagram and I'm really frustrated by the riders and my last mile. Mm. What is the one thing you'd say you encourage them to do or, um, and, and, you know, to get into this e-commerce space? Okay. Uh, my parting shot would be that there is nobody who can stop you from attaining your dream apart from you. Because, number one, nobody knows your dream apart from you. Mm. True. You're the only one who understands what that dream mm. is. Mm. So, if there's anyone who can stop you from that dream, it is only you. Mm. So, and I don't think any one of us wants to be their own stumbling block. So, despite all, and I, I feel that most of the challenges in, in, in doing anything, including being an entrepreneur, uh, are all internal. So, it's overcoming those internal barriers, uh, that voice in your head that's telling you that, no, you cannot. What does that voice know? You're the one who's out here. You're the one who understands your dream. You're the one who knows where you want to go. So don't stop yourself. There's somebody There's somebody who you go and tell your, your dream. Then uh, maybe, unfortunately, that person is a naysayer. Mm-hmm. But they only know the aspect of your dream that you have told them, which is maybe 2 or 3% of your dream. Yeah. Yeah? And they are judging your dream on 2 or 3%. They don't know the balance 90, 98, 97%. Mm. So don't stop because of anything else. Don't stop because of anything. Go for your dream. There's a reason why that dream came to you. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, from FMCG to tech, you, yes, I am yes. assuming you also taught yourself through the yes, internet yes, as well. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Very powerful. Yeah. What's your parting shot? My parting shot is... Well, mine is an endorsement. <laughs> so allow me drum rolls. I have a very... <laughs> my passion shot is, you know, I really love... Um, I'm very passionate. I have a rider who I use on a day-to-day basis. Oh, and mm. I'm very... I love him. I keep saying he's my best friend. All my mm. family mm. and friends know him. So I'm very passionate about the riders and what mm. you're doing for them. Mm. They're a big part of our society as mm. Kenyans. Mm. Like they are, they are... They help us mm. every day mm. in what we need to mm. do. And when we thought about it as Safaricom, we decided to introduce a very good proposition Mm. where as long as a rider or anyone in the transport sector is buying a data bundle, we have a great proposition called Data Plus where Mm. we offer them a data bundle 
plus daily accident cover from Britam Ooh. and free access to Google Beautiful. Maps. Where yeah. does this sign? I know. <laughs> yeah. Like as exactly. long as you buy that bundle yes. and yeah. the lowest bundle is 55, 55 bob, we give you 300 MBs for the day and then we give you free Beautiful. access to daily accident cover by Britam. Okay. Which is fantastic because you know these guys maybe most oh. of them are not able to oh. afford a yearly health plan mm. or medical plan mm. daily as long as you buy a data bundle you're covered if you get into an accident wow. yeah. yeah and for those who wow. haven't joined digimaps <laughs> yet they are able to actually get free access to google maps every day oh, wow. yeah so yeah. it's a very powerful proposition and i just mm. i'm very passionate about the rider mm. society yeah. so yeah so how wow. does how does someone get that yes. if you want to get the bundle all you have to do is dial star 544 hash or go on my safaricom app you will mm. see it under daily bundles just select data plus just look for data plus on 544 or on my safaricom app and you'll be able to purchase the bundle simple as that wow. thereafter if you want to claim um the process mm. um you just need to there's a short code there's a whatsapp link and there's also a phone number where you can be contacted by Britam as soon as you make your claim mm. awesome yeah my parting shot mm-hmm. so i've been schooled on mm-hmm. <laughs> combustion what did you talk about <laughs> <laughs> the the motor, the the motor, motor. <laughs> and there are many parts. Uh, I'm like, why? Uh, so I thank you for schooling me on that. But I think for me, what is really inspiring, and thank you for sharing, is even, mm-hmm. you know, right now we're talking about climate change. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, for me, it clicked this year when, we're talk- when the drought was happening, mm-hmm. right? And the, Im- the importance, the reason why we are hungry and food is not growing is because of just the actions that we've done over time. Okay. Yeah so food security is actually linked to the environment in a very direct mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. So for me the inspiration first is that that actually you're actually doing something and one of the mm-hmm. biggest booms i can say in the last 10 years maybe mm-hmm. is border riders right yes. and motorcycles. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you can imagine the number because first they are highly empowering. Mm-hmm. It's a it's it's helped us our lives you can mm-hmm. see how many jobs i think they were saying there about what's the university about you're talking about the universe of, of motorcycles riders of riders in the, in the field in now is between 5 to 10,000. 5 to 10,000 in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. In Nairobi. Nairobi. But mm-hmm. in the, in the country i think it's up to 200,000 or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So those are actually 200,000 livelihoods. Mm-hmm. So imagine if you can get those guys contributing positively to the environment. Yeah. Yeah, and i think yes. for me that is what um you know you've left me with mm-hmm. uh, which i think is extremely powerful to yeah. say how can we get more people using electric bikes mm. having unique propositions where actually it's good for your health mm. yeah and mm. actually good for the environment mm. and good for the customer yes. yeah. because at the end of the year your customer actually gets a better uh, rate mm. because they, you yes. don't have to spend on yes. fuel yes. yeah so i mean sustainability, sustainability. Yeah. i mean it's such a sustainable idea i mean yep. congrats we wish you well yeah thank you, ah, thank you so thank much you for, for coming. coming and sharing thank your you time for me. yeah Thanks. i know it was a really good yes. conversation yes. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys and we'll see you in the next episode yeah. of I Market podcast. Kununua bundles ya kila siku haikuwa rahisi kwa biashara yangu. Lakini sasa kwa vile bundles za safari kwa azina expiry day ndio napata uh, customer wangu wananipata online kila wakati. Na hapo ndio biashara yangu imeweza kuendelea zaidi. Go beyond with Kenya's fastest 4G network. Popote. Dial star 544 hash today. Yeah.